Kyle, thank you so much for joining us on This is Purdue. How does it feel to be back in Indiana, back in West Lafayette? Is there some nostalgia you're feeling? Yeah, definitely. Um, just good to see old friends. Tom Schott, uh, had breakfast with him this morning and, uh, you know, definitely brings back good memories and uh, seeing people that were so uh, supportive of me and, and uh, helped me along the way to, you know, get where I got. Um, it's always good to see those people. When did you first find out about Purdue? Like, what made you come to West Lafayette and attend Purdue? Yeah, um, I went to a small high school uh, in Iowa, so, you know, uh, was definitely looking to stay in the Midwest uh, to go to college. And uh, when, uh, when I was in high school, we were uh, a ground and pound team and only probably threw the ball maybe 13 or 14 times a game. So uh, probably started uh, really looking at schools my sophomore, junior year in high school and saw Purdue and Drew Brees and Coach Tiller and the type of offense that they ran and uh, you know early on really thought to myself that that would be a, a good opportunity for me to uh, you know just make myself a better quarterback. And you mentioned Drew Brees what was it like playing after him and kind of following in his footsteps? Uh, you know it was good and it was tough it, it uh, you know a good experience for me because uh, obviously an unbelievable player and it's tough to always uh, you know, follow those expectations, you know, especially when he's coming off of a great senior season and I'm coming in as a true freshman, a, an 18 year old kid. And, you know, you'd think you'd play pretty good and then you'd go back and compare your game to him, you know, and you'd say, oh boy, you know, you got a long ways to go. So uh, it was, it, it's fun. Uh, he was a big reason why I came to Purdue. He uh, would reach out to me when I was in high school and, and uh, that I was, I remember that, you know, it was very cool to get a big name college guy, you know, calling you up and say, hey, come to this school. And are you, you know, was he kind of like your mentor along the, the way? Or? No, you know, I, you know, he uh, he was busy with his stuff, you know. Uh, obviously, we never overlapped uh, outside of a, he was a, uh, a uh, coach for one of the football camps that I got invited to coming out of high school. So that was probably the most time that I spent one-on-one -on -one with him. He would uh, show me around on recruiting visits and all that stuff uh, when I was in high school still. But, um, you know, he had early success right away in the NFL and, uh, obviously doing his thing and I had early success in college and doing my thing and uh, it was definitely fun to meet up later and play in some good games against him. Uh, Tom told me to ask about the first game that you started in as a freshman. Apparently yeah. it was pouring rain. Yeah. Tell us about that game. Yeah, uh, in Bloomington uh, playing against probably one of the best college players ever, uh, Antoine randall -El. Uh I think in that game he was the punt returner, the quarterback, running back, he punted, uh, just an unbelievable all-around college player. And uh, we had a tough time. He was running all over the place and the field was so wet you would hydroplane, you would really slide and you know slide for 10, 12 feet after the play. We had guys sliding all over the place trying to tackle him. And uh, uh, starting the game, I thought, boy, we're gonna run the ball every time. You know, it's pouring down rain. Nobody can even grab the football. And uh, we, uh, we start the game and we had such a hard time taking a snap uh, from from underneath the center that we ditched the game plan and I think we ended up throwing it 65 times that game. Uh, my first first game really uh, getting a lot of playing time and I thought, man, that's why I came to Purdue. You know, that's <laughs> what I wanted to do was throw the ball a lot. And Coach Tiller has quite a reputation. You know, I know you were really close with him. What was it like playing under Coach Tiller? Uh, it was great. You know, he um, he. Uh, he put us in an opportunity to play in huge games, uh, play in a top-notch uh, program, but he never really put the pressure on the kids. He uh, always wanted you to have fun, always wanted you to go to the bowl game and enjoy your success, and uh, was uh, just a great coach. I, you know, when I think back at Purdue, you know, pretty much think about coach. Do you have a favorite story or memory that sticks out? Oh, just lots. You know, probably just. You know, one on one time with him, uh, you know, uh, I think he took us, you know, special liking to me. I don't know why. Uh, I'm glad that he did. Um, but uh, actually, he would, he would, uh, when, he, when he left Purdue, went back to Wyoming, and I was playing in Denver. And uh, once, twice, maybe three times a year, he'd go to a game in Laramie and then come in on Sunday. Him and Arnett would come in for the game and come in and stay with me and my wife and, and really got to spend, uh, uh, time with him in a relationship outside of player and coach and it, that was that was really special. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you have a favorite memory from your time as a student? Like any 
spots on campus that you loved or anything that sparks your memory? Yeah, I mean, just my, my whole time at Purdue, you know, pretty much good memories. Uh, just a, lo a lot of great friends. My, my uh, good friend, David Owen from the football team, he's my, god uh, my daughter's godfather now. I'm his daughter's godfather. Just all those great relationships and uh, great relationships with the equipment guys. These, the, the unknown guys on a football team, I mean, they were my best friends. You'd spend so much time at the facility and guys like Eric Lilly and Kyle Gurgley and Michael Shandrick and all these guys that uh, they, they, they really put so much time into making your experience easy and, and uh, you know, you become great friends with them. Is there an accomplishment that you're most proud of during your Purdue career? Probably, you know, no, I, I just uh, really with my whole career just wanted to be a good teammate. I wanted to try to work as hard as I can and maximize my potential and, uh, you know, I feel like I did that. So, um, yeah, I guess all of it's good. In 2004, Purdue beat Notre Dame in South Bend. What was the excitement like? Yeah. You know, after the game, even during the game, sure. what were you feeling? And I think we had the, the, the year bef the prior time at South Bend, I think we had a really good chance at beating them and, and had a couple bad breaks and a couple fumbles or a close game that we ended up losing. So we thought we had a chance the time before and we knew we had a good team going into that, going into that game. And, uh, I remember Taylor Stubblefield running scot free for you know 98 yard touchdown or something like that on an audible that we called and uh, just the excitement with uh, you know I got a picture in my office of me and coach uh, you know coming off the sidelines we were pumped up and <laughs> the bus ride home was great so uh, that was that was a special game to win up there for sure. Looking back, you know what was the draft like? What was the NFL draft like? What were you feeling at that time? Yeah, um, the draft was really. Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, a really low part of my uh, you know football career. To be honest with you, I thought I had a good college career and thought I thought I was lined up to be a you know pretty high draft pick and uh, and uh, just for whatever reason it kind of started sliding. And uh, that first day of the draft back then, you had two days of the draft and had all my friends over for the first day. And you know the agent told you, oh you know at the very worst you're going to go third round. Kind of thought I might go late first round. Definitely thought you know kind of second round and. Boy, that second round goes by and no quarterbacks were called. It was a strange draft. Aaron Rodgers went, you know, really late and everybody started to slide and gets into the third round and I'm thinking, boy, this might not happen today. And I start, you know, the, the friends start leaving, you know, and <laughs> next thing you know, it's just you and the family, you know, and you're not drafted and uh, got a call the next day by the Bears and uh, fourth round draft pick. And you're thinking, boy, uh, you know, tough start to the career. and just funny how sports works because uh, you know I think two months later I was a starting quarterback and we won 13 games that year and won the division and uh, you would have never thought you know with the way the draft happened I would have thought that it was going to take me four years to get back on the field. Did that like hurt your confidence at the time? Yeah there's always stuff that hurts your confidence you know and uh, always adversity in sports and that's really uh, you know as you move higher and higher uh, into your career and more competitive sports uh, you know, really, um, I feel like a lot of people kind of have the same ability, but uh, the guys that can have the short memory, the guys and girls that can have the short memory and uh, respond to adversity in the right way and use it to fuel their workouts and to give them a goal, you know, those are the guy, people that um, eventually make it to the top. And looking back on your NFL career, how would you describe it? Crazy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> crazy. Uh, you know, uh, Play four years for the Bears and, and uh, loved it and had a lot of early success. Got on the field right away and uh, thought, boy, this is going to be just like college. I'm going to just, you know, going to walk in and I'm going to be the guy and uh, go 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 from a really high high my first year to boom, I'm number three on the depth chart. You know, my second year and uh, bummed out. Third year, don't play, and then finally get my opportunity again my fourth year and. Uh, I kind of knew it was like now or never, you know, if you wanted to be a starter, you know, you had to, you had to play well and played well enough and kind of went on the deal to where, uh, you know, I think uh, my daughter was, uh, she was five and she had lived in six different cities and uh, kind of looked at her and said, I think that's enough. Well, how did you feel when you retired? Were there mixed emotions there? No, no, uh, not really at all. I, uh, you know, I uh, really wanted to be a committed dad and like I had and uh, just, Played for 10 years, four years in college, and blessed to play a game for a job my whole life. And I was pretty healthy. And, uh, you know, like I said, really wanted to be that active dad. And 
you know, I think I had probably chances to play for another three or four years and um, just I, I kind of knew. Some guys don't know. I, I definitely knew. Okay. Yep. That's great. Yeah. What did you think, you know, I know that you went back to school yep. to Purdue to earn your degree. Yep. What kind of spurred you to do that? My mother, 100% <laughs> my mom. Uh, uh, I think I had 12 hours when I left school, maybe nine hours when I left school, and I believe that somehow hours got added, so I ended up with 15 hours. So I had maybe 15 or 18 hours I had to complete when I was done, and uh, my mom, the first year, Kyle, you're going to do it. And I didn't do it the first year. I said, give me, give me one year off, Mom. The second year, she came back, said, you're going to do it. And I said, OK. So uh, got it done. I'm really glad that I did and uh, um, glad that I got it done from the school. What was your major? History. OK. Yep. Started off in political science and okay. then switched to history. My dad was a, went to law school and was a state employee for Iowa for 30 years. Uh -huh. And didn't know if I wanted to maybe go to law school, teach, or, or do something in politics, but definitely a history major. Okay, so after you know you graduate from Purdue, you've you've played in the NFL, you've graduated. How did Purdue tee you up for success after? Living all over the place, one thing you'll find is uh, there's Purdue alumni everywhere, and uh, uh, always in the business community. So I've made good relationships through that, and uh, you know, really just uh, college life taught me, you know, whether it was academics or football, just. Uh, you know, you got to work hard and you have to stay committed and you have to have goals. And I think if you can do that, you'll be successful. Do you still follow the Purdue program closely? I do. I follow them as obviously as close as I follow any college. I, I, uh, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I hope uh, I hope there's some changes to, to college football. You know, I think this the amount of money that's gotten into the game over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years is staggering and it's not the kids money it's you know the adults that are in the game that make all the money so I uh, I really hope that because uh, I love amateur athletics and I love college football I really do and I and I love the tradition of the game I love the Indiana Purdue game I love the Indiana Notre Dame game I love the Nebraska Oklahoma game and uh, something's got to change for uh, for it to happen because I don't think it's going in the right direction right now yeah how would you compare when you were playing to today pressure Pressure for kids, uh, pressure obviously for the coaches because they make so much money that it's a it's a right now deal, um, and uh, the problem is, is people look up to the college. So my son looks up to the NCAA. He and high schools do, and it seeps down. So so much pressure now in youth sports, you know, yeah. and it seeps into high school. So I just I hope the leaders in the NCAA realize that it's an amateur game. Academics are important. Mm -hmm. And that come Sunday, if you want to get you know paid and make the big money, you know that that that's played in the NFL. And you want it to be more, you know, you want these kids to be having fun, right? I want the kids to make enough. When you when you play college athletics, the time requirements for that sport are such that you cannot have a second job. So I want those kids to be able to make money, no doubt about it. Yeah. They sh It's just the adult money in the game is is crazy. What role would you say Purdue has had in your life? Boy, I, colleges just have such a formulative role on your whole life. I mean, what a you always just wish you could go back, you know, to, to be, you know, 17, 18, 19 years and uh, meeting all your friends. I've got such long term friends from college and uh, just just uh, people that have helped form who I am. Um, and uh, it's just great memories. Did you ever run into any Boilermakers in the NFL community or play with them, against them? Oh, yeah, for sure. We uh, uh, Probably one of the, the most underrated things about Purdue was how many guys that we put into the, uh, put into the NFL and uh, guys that had great careers. I mean, wow, great careers. Uh, Drew, obviously, but, man, Matt Light, starting left tackle, pro bowler, you know, uh, just a great player. The, 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 the list is too long to name all the guys, but... Uh, you couldn't go many Sundays without uh, playing against a Boilermaker, and uh, always one of my favorites would be going to Kansas City, and Lynn Dawson would always come down after the game and find me in the locker room, and, hey, Boilermaker, how you doing, you know, and uh, uh, saw that he passed, and that was very sad. He was a great guy and, uh, and a great Boilermaker. When you think about, you know, the fans and the Purdue spirit, you know, the band, all the great things that make Purdue Purdue, what does that mean to you? That's great. It's tradition. You know, that's college football. It's college sports. And that's that's exactly what I hope we don't lose. You know, 
by uh, by what's going on. But college athletics is all about tradition. It's all about playing for something and uh, playing for each other. And uh, you know that's that's really the great part of the game. Looking back, what does that Purdue community kind of? mean to you as you know you went through it you played you know you came back to Purdue to yeah, finish sure. your degree it's a small community you know and that's like I said when I was in high school that's what I was looking for um, now that I've been through my career I'm back in a small community in Iowa you know that's kind of the person that I am I love being in the Midwest and uh, you know it, it really feels a lot like home you know you 400 miles from Iowa or whatever <laughs> but uh, driving through the farm towns and stuff it's uh, it's pretty similar why did you go to Iowa? Did you ever have your sights set on that? Uh, Coach Stiller. They didn't have Coach Stiller, okay. so uh, you know he was he was the reason. Him and his whole staff, uh, Coach Stiller, Jim Cheney, Greg Olson. Um, like I said, guys that they made me a lot better football player, but I think they made me a lot better person, and they let me have fun, and they uh, it was it was a special special staff. Is there a moment that you have in your NFL career that you look back on and? You're like, wow, I can't believe that happened, or, or you were so proud of maybe. Yeah, I just, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm proud that I was, I think, uh, outside of the one stop in uh, Kansas City, I think I was a captain on, you know, every team that I've played for, um, you know, so I think I always had the respect of my teammates, um, and, you know, any job that you're really in, you know, you're, you're searching for the respect of your peers, and, uh, you know, I think I, I had that, and, had a had a nice career, and uh, like I said, it was uh, it's a crazy it's a crazy life. It's a it's a great job for a 25 year old without kids and all that <laughs> stuff. And uh, did it while I could do it and got out while I could. Are your kids entering the age where they would be interested in college? Do they have any? Interest no, I got a 10 year old daughter and uh, okay. who's a who's a great horseback rider oh. and a uh, little outdoorsman, and then a, a six year old son who's just getting into sports himself and getting into football and he's so pumped up to come to the game this week and yeah. then drive up to Chicago and get to go to the Bears game so uh, he uh, he's gonna have some big guys uh, for sure come this weekend. Okay so they're a little too young to be yes. <laughs> to be looking yes. at colleges. But my I wife's a big tiger so my wife's from uh -oh. LSU so it'll be uh, <laughs> she's she's uh, she's all in the air about Baton Rouge and go Tigers but I think my son will probably listen to me when it comes to that. I, we hope to have a little Orton on the football yeah, team again. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you want to say to the fans, to the Purdue community? Just, uh, you know, thank you for the support over all the years. Uh, I had a great time when I was playing and definitely fun to turn on Boilermaker football and, and watch them when they're uh, playing. Awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you.